Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. And for everyone who doesn't know me, I'm a 3D and visual effects trainer and artist for more than 20 years now. Today's lesson is a demo lesson from my newest publication Pixel Train Blender Fundamentals Fast Forward. This publication is a full introduction into Blender, its workflows and tools for beginners and artists from other 3D applications. So if you want to learn Blender and don't want to watch hundreds of tutorials here on YouTube and don't get the answers you are looking for, please consider this publication. You find the trailer here on my YouTube and it's a publication which is at the moment 20 hours and 150 lessons, but it's still growing with the plus content. But now let's get into the lesson. If you have any questions, please comment below. And if you like this kind of tutorials, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. But now let's get started. Have fun, your Helga Mouse. Blender's way of giving you as a modeler tools which are keyboard driven in a really clever way is one of the main reasons why modeler love Blender. In my practice, I really seldom use these tools at the site. There are occasions where these are really helpful. And for this, I showed you the shift spacebar menu here to come to them quite quickly. But in most cases, I use the keyboard shortcuts for the transformation tools. You will see that these tools are different than these here. That's really confusing for the beginner. So in this lesson now, I want to show you the differences. I have this simple teapot scene here. If you select the teapot here and you want to move it up and down, for example, you can use the keyboard shortcut G on your keyboard. Remember that I have activated the keyboard shortcuts here on the right side of my viewport so you can read what I'm doing. So if you press G, G stands for grab, and this was the old name of the move tool inside of Blender. So G like grab, you are now in the grab mode. So you don't have to hold down G, you only press one G, and now you can directly grab here your object and move it around. Please also look into your status bar. You see now that you have all kinds of modifiers, which you now can use here, and many of them will be explained in a moment. If you are now in grab mode, you can move your object around wherever you want. If you are finished, then you have two options. The first option is to confirm, which is done with the left mouse button and then the grab is done. And like always, you can look into your adjust last operation and make nicer values if you like or something like that. But sometimes you start a grab and you then decide that you don't want to use it. You can cancel the operation in the classic Blender way, which is the right mouse button or even the escape key. So if I now press the right mouse button, you see the teapot goes back to the position where it was before. This works for all three of our transformation tools. So what's the second one? The second one is the S key like scale. Here comes an interesting point. You remember that I told you that all transformations inside of Blender are referring to the object origin of the object. You see that the teapot has its object origin here and this is really important if you are now scaling. I show you why. I have a little space between the origin and my mouse cursor and now I press the S key like scale. And you will see that we now have this dotted line between the origin and my mouse cursor. And if I now start to move this mouse here, you will see that I now drag the size here really easily. But the problem comes, so I cancel with right mouse button click, if you are maybe too close to this origin point. So if you now press S, you see this line is extremely short and you see that the speed here of scaling is absolutely fast. And in many cases, uncontrollable. So cancel that with the right mouse button again. Be sure that if you want to have more precision for your movement of scale, have a greater distance to this origin point. You see, if I'm here now, press S, you see now the line is longer and you have much more precision. And if you need even more precision, you remember the shift key as a helper for the precision mode. And like always, 
here the borders of our viewport are no borders for our mouse. You can go on and on and on while I'm holding down the shift key. So this is now a really controllable scale, right? And if you like it, press then with the left mouse button to type it in. The third operation is R, like rotate. And it's the same thing here. If you are too close here, the line is extremely short and the rotation is quite fast. But if you now move your mouse out here, and this is possible in the rotation, but not in the scale for obvious reasons, you can then go around the object and now rotate it like you want. If you like that, then you can press the left mouse button or the right mouse button to cancel. Okay, this is the basic function of the whole thing. G like grab, R like rotate and S like scale. But you have also seen that we have no restrictions going on at this keyboard shortcut. And this is the next thing we want to do. Let's reset the position here of the teapot by selecting the teapot and bring the location back to zero here and also the scale to one. So now we are back here to normal. I want now that I move my teapot here on this table without snapping. So I don't want to change the Z, but I want to move it in X or Y direction. So let's do that. I select that, I press G. And then you can read now that we have in the status line a whole bunch of helpers. The first helpers are X, Y, and Z. And these are constraints. So if you know now that you want to move in X direction, you can press now as a second keyboard shortcut, the X key, and also refer here to the top, to the option bar. You see at the moment the distance in X, Y, and Z is zero. If you now press X, you now see that we only have one distance and we are now moving along the global X. Okay, now we can move this guy around and place it somewhere here. Same thing, G and Y to move it now in Y direction. Cool, so quite easy to remember, right? But what if I want to use now two axes at the same time because I want to move here on the table, which is X and Y and not Z. Press the G key and then you see that we also have a full bunch of plane constraints, which are used with Shift X, Shift Y and Shift Z. So if you press Shift Z, we stay on the Z plane, which is the floor here. Now you see we have these two axes active and now you can move your teapot here on this floor with the constraints. If you insert a constraint by accident, there's also a clear constraint which is the C key on your keyboard and the moment you do that you are out of the constraints again and now you can say okay I want to have for example X and then you get this here as a result. Okay now you have seen how you can work with these restrictions. Instead of typing these restrictions we also have a middle mouse button gesture for that. So let's try that. So I want to move again G in this direction here, which is Y, but I want to stay on the Y axis and not in every direction. And to do that, hold down your middle mouse button and drag at the same time a little bit to the right. And now you see you get an axis as a helper so that you know exactly in which direction you go. And this is now the gesture based. If I want to have it in X, I click the middle mouse button and drag a little bit in direction of the X. It takes some practice, I know but you will manage it and click then with the left mouse button to place it somewhere. Now you have seen how the restrictions work. So you can use the keyboard X, Y, Z or shift X, Y, Z or the middle mouse button for that. Let's make something new. I go here to the side view. You remember if you are navigating with the middle mouse button, you can hold down the alt key to snap here into the side or in our case here, the front view. I press now G and I move my teapot up. And then I have a little bit of a space between the origin and my teapot. Press R and now I rotate this teapot in this direction. What I now want is I want to move my teapot in this direction here. So you remember from our last session, okay, this is the local 
axis of our teapot, not the global one. How to do that now with the keyboard? So you press G first, so you are in the grab mode now, but now I need the axis restriction, which is Z in our case. But the problem with Z normally is that it goes into global direction. You can read that here in the header line in the options along global Z. But if you press Z the second time, you see that you are now moving along the local Z. And if you press Z again, you are back in all three axes. So X, Y, and Z are rotating toggles. First time you press it, it's along the global Z, for example. Second time it's local. Third time you remove the constraint. And then you have the same like pressing the C key. Okay, I say I want to move it in Z. So two times Z and then you can move it here for your positioning in this direction. By the way, these axis constraints work in all of these tools. So if you are scaling, for example, S key, this scale here scales now in all directions, but you only want to scale in Z, for example, but the first Z will be world space, which is not exactly what I'm after. Z again, and now we can scale along the local Z, which looks funny, I think, right? Okay, now you have learned a lot about that, so let's reset these values. A faster way of resetting you will learn in the next lesson. So let's zero this out. Also the rotation and the scale is one here and every time. Now it looks correct. And to get rid here of the annotation, which I drawn in by holding down the D key, it's the same like using this here, but if you hold down the D key, you can communicate nicely with other people. To get rid of that, you can use the D key and the right mouse button to have an eraser, or you go to view annotations. Here's the annotation, and you can click the minus key to get rid of that. Okay. Let's go back here to our teapot. What I now want to do is I want to show you how you can work with numerical values while you are transforming. For example, you know that you want to place your teapot two units or two meters over the table. So I select now my teapot, press the G key. I want to have the Z direction, so I press Z. And now you can read again here in the options bar at the top how far I'm moving. But what I now want to do is I want to have it exactly two meter. And the cool thing is you can insert simple or even advanced expressions here. So if you type now two, you will see that the distance is now in an expression. You see, you are exactly at two meters and you only can say yes, do that, or no, I don't want that. Or you can remove the two meters by using the backspace key. So if you go to backspace, you see your expression here at the top is removed. And we can type in, for example, 3.5 meters. That's cool. And now we can press the enter key or the left mouse button to say I want to have that. That's a really fast way of being really accurate. So how to, for example, rotate now this teapot around 45 degree around the Y axis. You select the teapot, press R, press Y and type in 45 and press enter. That's it. If you want to have it back, rotate Y minus 45 enter and you are back. So these are the simple expressions you see not so complicate. What you also can do, let's bring now the teapot back here, is you also can walk in two or three axes at the same time. Let's try this. Select the teapot, press G and now we can type three values because here we have distance in X, distance in Y, distance in Z in the header bar. So let's say I don't want to move in X, so I type in zero, and you can see my input. Now I press the tab key, and the second one, dy, is none at the moment. I want to have it minus two meters. Okay, it comes in our direction. Tap again, and in Z direction, I want to have it in three meters. And now I press enter. And now you see, this is an extremely powerful system. 
So this is something you maybe have to work a little bit with, but you will see it gets second nature. I hope this helps you in your daily practice and we will practice that also in the modeling chapters.